Hey guys, welcome back to another video with Raven, a wild mustang that I've been gentling. So Raven is now leaving the pen and has been introduced to electric fencing. She's been doing some obstacles around the property and she's doing a lot of desensitization. Saddling was never a big deal for her, nor was accepting her first passenger, Mr. Moose. She proved to be very level-headed, particularly when Mr. Moose slid off of her back. Things with her training slowed down a bit as I started focusing on some of the other horses. Now today, I'm going to be bringing you up to date with Raven, which means that this will be the last video in her series for a little while at least. So I had taught Raven a while back how to load using a trailer that I had rented and it's been a little time since then. We recently picked up this trailer and now it's time to get some more loading practice. I don't always have a horse trailer, so I try to make the most of the opportunity when I have one. When I initially taught her how to load, it was a whirlwind of a weekend and I was really using the trailer for other horses, but wanted to squeeze her in and I did get her on the trailer, but now I really wanna get practice in with loading and unloading and just getting her comfortable being inside the trailer. I tried making the inside of the trailer pleasant by giving her alfalfa once she walked inside. After she munched on that for a while, I unloaded her and then just kept repeating that process. If you're in the horse world, you know that trailer loading can be stressful for both the human and the horse, even a domesticated horse. Loading into a small, dark, enclosed space goes against the horse's natural instincts. But not only that, Raven's prior experiences as a wild Mustang have been being flagged on the trailer to be shipped across the country and then arrive in a strange new location. I keep the sessions on the trailer pretty short initially because my goal is to have her be successful. I want to be the one initiating the unloading and I don't want her getting really nervous and then running out on her own. So I try to build on her growing confidence and take baby steps moving forward. I love that saying, take the time it takes so it takes less time. Raven has learned exceptionally fast and I would say that I've been able to teach her the most in the shortest amount of time, as in like training hours. There of course were gaps in her training, but if you looked at the number of hours spent training and what she accomplished, she definitely accomplished a lot more with the time than the other horses. They all just learn a little bit differently. And this is not to say that she is finished gentling on the ground, because she's not. One of the holes in her training right now is working with other handlers. Just because I've been able to do a lot with her does not mean that that will transfer to someone else initially. Before she's able to be adopted, she'll have to be introduced to a variety of new handlers so she's more comfortable with people as a whole. Okay, so where is Raven today? So as you can see, Raven's coat once again darkened with the approach of winter, but she kept that adorable red mane. We're now in the middle of a Vermont winter and she's got quite the fluffy coat. She's been a companion to Sparrow since her very first day here. Like the other Mustangs, she's had a bit of a training break through the winter. I do do some maintenance training like haltering, leading, lunging, saddling, but she's definitely going to need a refresher and I also am looking forward to getting other people around her. Okay, look at this beautiful Mustang coat doing a great job insulating her well. Really quick here, notice that Sparrow and Raven have matching socks. They both have a bigger sock on their right side and a smaller sock on their left hind. Sparrow's is more apparent from the other side, but it's really cute. Anyway, this was a fairly cold day and seeing the snow on their backs is a great sign of how well their coats are working to insulate them. If heat was being lost from their backs, you wouldn't see snow on their backs as it would be melting. There are several ways to monitor how they're doing in the cold, but generally, as long as they have a shelter and a break from the wind, they do fine. If the temperature plummets, we tend to give them a lot of extra hay as the act of digesting helps to keep them warm. There's of course always exceptions to that. Other breeds may not do as well in the winter, age may be a factor, or the horse's weight. Actually, when Sparrow first arrived in Vermont, she was pretty underweight and I was definitely worried about her at times. Now that she's got more weight on, this winter has been much easier. As you can see, these guys are good buddies and the winter has brought out the playfulness in the horses. I definitely see a lot of play going on in the winter. In fact, this is my view from my window as I'm editing. I am very often entertained when I look out and literally as I'm editing right now, they are playing currently. They also started engaging in mutual grooming, which is something new and Sparrow's pretty funny because she'll start out being nice and then she'll throw in a bite afterwards. 
Anyway, so that's the latest on the training and her life of Raven. I hope you guys enjoyed watching her series. I will be again picking up her training once spring comes and I have better footing and conditions to work in. So you will be seeing videos of Raven in the future. Like the other Mustangs, she will be available for adoption. So if you're interested in her, head on over to my website. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.